I think if I could define in the last 50 years, it's been a search for teachers, great minds to work with, and I've been very lucky. I've been very lucky. It started with Vassar, where I think um, I loved every moment, and the art department was wonderful, and I learned a lot. I'm a painter, and all my life has been devoted to doing what I can with my painting. Uh, after A few years after I graduated, I lived in New York for a while, and then I had to go back to Miami Beach, which was not a cultural hotbed. It was really, <laughs> I thought my life was going to end there. But um, I started a, the first women's co-op gallery art center in the southeast, and we got together and we brought down great teachers. We brought Robert Motherwell, we brought um, Hoffman students who really were his disciples, Hans Hoffman, uh, John Chamberlain, all kinds of really important artists today came down to this little art center. Um, it was a time of terrible male chauvinism in the art world. Uh, we struggled a lot. One of our favorite teachers used to refer to us as you goddamn girls. <laughs> And even Hans Hoffman would say to someone, if they had a good painting, it's pretty good for a woman. So we put up with it. And eventually, uh, I started to look around. and I, I heard of a man named Buckminster Fuller. And he, you know, he invented the geodesic dome. And he was a great poet, inventor, Renaissance man. And he was doing a... Um, a project in New York called The World Game. So I found a way to write to him to be selected to be one of 26 participants in this World Game. The World Game was the opposite of a war game. In the war game, one side loses and one side wins. In the World Game, everyone is a winner. So he selected 26 people who were generalists. He thought it would be very bad to have specialists in this since you had to have a whole world view and be open to new ideas. Um, we were, well, our leader there was Ed Schlossberg. Do you know who he is? No. Yeah, Caroline Kennedy's husband. Very terrific people there. He uh, had a mathematician, an artist, a poet. The only class of people he did not want were politicians because he thought they would be definitely one-sided. Uh, we had maps on the walls and we did scenarios of natural resources, arable land, all kinds of things that would help mankind. He said man was meant to be uh, a winner on, on the um, planet. He was meant to survive and survive well. We discovered a lot of things, like one year in Japan, um, they had exported and imported the same amount of rice. We never <laughs> knew why, but there was a tremendous... <laughs> a tremendous amount of waste, and Fuller's idea was that with good technology and working very efficiently, man would, there would be enough to go around. He was definitely not a Malthusian. He thought it was not going to be the survival of the fittest, that there should be enough for everybody, and using resources properly, there would be. He was a brilliant man, and um, it really changed my view of the whole world to work with him. Um, it was a very, very terrific time. At, it was at the uh, New York Studio School. And I missed one of my kids' graduation and everything to go there, but you know, I have to make choices. That may have been a very good choice. Uh, after Fuller, I had heard of a man named Dan Kiley, who was a great, great landscape architect. He had worked with Saarinen, and he was interested in discovering things in space, the same way I was about structure in space. Uh, we collaborated on my landscape, and he thought our working relationship was really, really good. My kids used to love it. He was about 80-some 80, 80 years old, and he used to sit in the back seat of the car when my kids were driving me around, kissing, you know, being just, you know, he's an adorable little elf of a man. He died, sadly, last year, but his work is gorgeous. 
It's um, very, very pared down. It's a beautiful use of space with plants. Very spiritual. I think all of these teachers have helped me so much in my work. Um, we have, I have kind of an Eastern look to my work, and I think, I don't know why, it's just the way I see space. And I think in the world today, it's full of psychic overload, visual fragmentation, and I think a centering and quiet is very necessary. And all of these people I've worked with, I think have helped me to come to that point. It started with Vassar and the good teachers I had here. It's made me pretty discriminating about what I see out in the art world. I can pretty much shift through all of the stuff and not be taken in by too much. Um, so I'm very grateful to be back here, see all my friends and my wonderful roommates, and everybody looks so terrific. And thank you very much.